So large language models have a problem. It needs you to provide it context to understand and respond to your question properly. And to make it actually useful, you sometimes need the AI to reference an entire code base or documentation that can go up to millions of words in total. While this context window varies between different models, at the end of the day, it is still set to a fixed amount. So extending that context window is the goal, until we started to hit a wall of diminishing return. Not to include the fact that even if you can fit the information into the context window, the model can still forget or hallucinate. So initially, researchers have looked for alternative mechanisms like Mamba, but the attention mechanism within Transformers, which powers all the top AI models, still reigned the supreme in terms of performance, and most people pivot to storing memory externally like using RAG. But that method relies too much on the selecting pipeline to find you the right documents to feed into the context window. So the forefront of fixing the memory problem has shifted to improving the architectural design surrounding attention instead. And today, we will be taking a look at three research papers that make these improvements at different scales. So grab onto your copium inhalers because 2025 might just accelerate. And before we dive into it, aren't you tired of paying so many AI subscriptions every single month? What if I tell you there's a place you only need to pay 10 bucks and is actually pretty nice to use? Mapmood.ai is an all in one platform that provides you access to all the top tier text generation models, image generation models, and web search functionalities. With Thumbnail offering O3 Mini, DeepSeek R1, Claude 3.5, Gemini, Midjourney, Flux, and Recraft, all within a great price that is 10 bucks, it is already cheaper than paying for any one of their monthly subscriptions. So if you want to save some money while being able to experience the state of the art models, definitely check out mapmood.ai using the link down in the description. And thank you mapmood.ai for sponsoring this video. Anyways, in the first paper published by Sakana AI, the researchers thought, what if instead of just remembering everything in a systematic way, we have this new system called a NAM, which learns to evolve with the training data. To explain it simply, think of a computer taking notes for a very long lecture on a piece of paper. The computer is systematic, so when the lecture is long, it uses predetermined algorithms to save writing spaces on the paper like removing the space between words or even skip writing the entire word if it has more than let's say 7 letters. And when the lecture is way too long, the computer might end up writing down notes that just store the initial letter of every single word that is spoken in the lecture. And practically, it is unreadable. So what's cool about NEM is that it is like an actual student that has been actively learning and taking notes from the lecture. So instead of blindly applying rules to cut down spaces, the student listens to the lecture and learns to identify what's truly important, like writing down the core ideas, key arguments, and the crucial examples. The student would also remove any redundant words, less important side comments, and unnecessary tension that the professor made. And the student did not know how to take good notes at the very start. They were trained through their experience from not knowing how to make notes, rewarded when their notes helped them to get good grades, and evolved throughout their training stage to get to its insane note-taking abilities now. So the student, which is NAM, is a 4000 parameter model that is attached to the attention mechanism during training to learn what words are important and what's not, and can reduce 75% of the KV cache for Llama 3AB, which just means that it can use 75% less space compared to a computer writing down notes in a systematic way. And it can even be reattached directly to a different type of model, kind of like when a smart undergrad student is tossed into a graduate level lecture and can still have 17% less notes compared to a computer and has no loss in performance. Which is really cool, right? But that still doesn't solve the issue of only having one piece of paper to take notes on. And you cannot really just use two pieces of paper due to the guaranteed performance fall off of the attention mechanism. Basically, whoever reads more than one paper would have a stroke. So the next research by Meta called Memory Layer at Scale is like giving the note-taking student an additional tool, which is a specialized flashcard system alongside their regular notes. For NAM, we had an improvement of the note-taker, but here we are improving the paper, which is Transformers Dense Layers that would provide space for the note-taker to write down the core concepts, reasoning, and flow of the lecture. While this component is crucial for saving the lecture concepts, they are still computationally intensive to create and process. So memory layers are like this flashcard system that stores facts where each flashcard has two sides, a key, and a value. With a twist being that this flashcard system is trainable and self-organized during training. So as the student attends more lectures, the flashcard system learns to create and refine these key value pairs automatically. And because the key of the flashcard system is indexed, it is way faster than rereading all their detailed notes to find a single fact, which makes this process insanely cheap to run. But isn't this just using more papers? Well, it is, but the process 
processing power needed for this well-organized system is so small that it barely impacts any performance. Then why don't we just make all the nodes into flashcards then? Well, flashcards are only good for factual retrieval, right? A regular node is simply too versatile because it can contain more than just factual knowledge. Ideas such as how to reason effectively are stored within node rather than flashcards. So in the actual experiment of the research papers, the best ratio for replacing the dense layer with the memory layer is one in every eight layers, and it can increase the accuracy by two times on factual benchmarks and uses less compute as memory layers are sparsely activated. However, this does not take into consideration of the facts that might need constant updates, such as today's date, the current weather in New York, or it is now the Gulf of America. The ability to erase and forget about things is as important as the ability to remember things, right? So to implement that idea, the researchers over at Google proposed a more radical architectural change than the previous two papers. Inspired by the human brain, this architecture differentiates between memories just like ours. They design it with the ideas of a short-term memory, a long-term memory, and a persistent memory. The short-term memory is just like the note that the student is taking notes on. The long-term memory is kind of like the flashcards that the student uses, but not entirely the same. And the persistent memory is something a bit different, which I'll get to later. Apart from the short-term memory that's mostly the same technical and analogy-wise that I used for the previous papers, the long-term memory on the other hand is a bit different. It is similar to flashcards, but not specifically designed with the efficiency that the key value technique has. It specifically has this surprise mechanism where it actively seeks out and prioritizes memorizing information that is unexpected or contradicts its prior understanding, which creates this forgetting mechanism that is not just a simple decay like a lazy student that doesn't check why he got a 99% on his math finals versus a hardworking student that revises why they got the question wrong. So it is more open arms to new updates like the year now is 2050 instead of resisting. Anyways, as for the persistent memory, it is like the student learning skills and related to the lecture, and it is also not updated during inference time. Like you would learn how to write words outside of lectures and bring those skills into note taking, and not trying to improve your handwriting during lectures, because you would be distracted too, right? This persistent memory is designed to store reasoning skills and other highly abstracted ideas that wouldn't need to be updated during inference time. So with these three new memories, the researchers have proposed three ways to combine them together when it is needed to generate an output. For memory as context, imagine the professor asks a question about a subtopic. So the student that is using Mac to answer would quickly pull up those flashcards and relevant background knowledge before answering. But the key here is that the flashcard is just for reference and not necessarily used in every response. As for memory as a gate, the flashcards are directly contributing to the response alongside its notes. So the flashcard is not like an afterthought. For memory as a layer, the student's response would be primarily looking at the flashcard to generate an answer. So these three ways are basically prioritizing the flashcards in different levels, with Mac being the best overall, Mag being the best for fast or parallel processing, and Mel being not as good. So with this new architecture, the context window now is able to scale larger than 2 million tokens like a breeze, which is just highly effective in long context. With this Google's architecture called Titans, I just realized I haven't mentioned its name. It can now perform any existing state-of-the-art models in terms of accuracy in the 1 million context window with a staggering 94% accuracy. What's even more insane is that it can extend up to a 10 million context window, which no other model has done before, and is still able to sit at a whopping 70% accuracy for basically finding a specific sentence within the entire Harry Potter series times 10. Promising, isn't it? As attention is still the key success for LLMs, this might be the evolution transformers needed. With the largest Titan model being only 760 million parameters, our eyes would need to focus on how well it scales next, so subscribe to stay tuned. And if you love these type of cutting edge research, definitely check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the juiciest papers weekly that I might not have the time to make into videos. I have already written a more technical explanation over there on Titans when it just came out, and the same goes for the other two papers, so definitely go check them out. Thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Migulim, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shainer, Marcelo Ferreria, Zion Sheep, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.